Well, happy 4th of July to you. I guess there were plenty of fireworks over the weekend when it comes to Notre Dame football recruiting, Mike. Let me just begin with five-star defensive lineman Justin Scott, the Catholic League kid out of Chicago, who ended up picking Ohio State. Notre Dame was on his list. Does this come across to almost everybody involved as a big surprise that not only he picked Ohio State, he picked this time to do so? Sort of. Sort of, Darren. I wrote a whole article at blueandgold.com uh, early Tuesday afternoon on this topic. It's called the, the article is titled Justin Scott to Ohio State Perspective from a Notre Dame Writer. Um, and I wrote in this like, look, my reporting on this had been not maybe not all over the place, but maybe fine, there's a better term than that. But it it was kind of it was a little bit though because. Because this recruitment was all over the place. I had wrote I, when, at the end of June. I was like, listen, I'm hearing a lot of Michigan buzz. Like I, I Georgia, Miami out of it. He's staying in the Midwest. I was hearing Michigan buzz. And then he commits to Ohio State. And you're like, well, what the heck, Mike? Well, then there's a quote that he said, I was ready to commit to Michigan. Quote from Justin Scott. And then he says, then we visit Ohio State. And, you know, and then uh, the rest of course of history. So side note, hey, at least it wasn't Michigan, right? Um, that Justin Scott, you know, the, the five-star from St. Ignatius, Chicago commits, uh, you know, to the Buckeyes and not, and not Michigan. So again, the the Michigan buzz, was, although sort of correct, you know, he didn't end up committing to Michigan. But I also put in that same report, hey, I'm, I'm hearing he could commit in July. Like I, I, I'd heard he could commit this past weekend. So it wasn't a total shock. And Scott had even said himself, hey, when I commit, I'm just putting it out there. It's done. I'm not putting out, hey, I'm committing on my birthday in July. You know what? I think his birthday is actually in January when he was maybe going to commit to Notre Dame, which I'm sure we'll talk about next, Darren. Uh, there wasn't going to be some grand declaration hat ceremony stream on a one of these you know media outlets. He just said, hey, I'm putting it out there. I don't even think Scott put it out himself. He just kind of retweeted on three stuff. So sort of a surprise, um, though, because like Notre Dame, I don't know what kind of heads up they got. I don't know if Scott called them and what, you know, like I don't know what that looked like. So somewhat, again, he had hinted at it. I had been hearing it, but still for a five-star player, it, there's usually a, hey, I'm committing at this time. You know, media is welcome to come watch it. There's going to be a stream. Uh, but again, that didn't take place. Early on in the process, we heard a lot of Notre Dame buzz. I think in even one of his quotes he had mentioned in January, hey, Notre Dame was, I don't want to say, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but they were in pretty good shape. They might have been leading at that particular yeah, time. Just because we are now in July and Notre Dame didn't get the player, doesn't mean Notre Dame lost interest. Doesn't mean Notre Dame didn't put on the, the full court press. Is this just one of those situations where, hey, there's great competition. There were a lot of good schools going after him. And Notre Dame did all they could in the recruitment. But it was one of those things. He simply picked Ohio State. And we shouldn't get into the blame game, which always seems to happen when it comes to a five-star recruit. I think a lot of things can be true here. I do think Al Washington got out recruit out recruited here. I think Larry Johnson for Ohio State is one of the best defensive line coaches in the country. I have never covered Ohio State. I don't know a ton about Larry Johnson, but I know whenever I talk to a D line recruit, like the, the, I mean, he's just very well respected. I think Larry Johnson out recruited Al Washington. I like I, I again, Darren. When do I get on here and, and say negative things about Notre Dame coaches? Not it's not often. That but might I just don't first, think honestly. I don't think Al Washington did a very a very good job in in Justin Scott for, for I, I don't I think Marcus Freeman, um, even Al Golden, Chad Bowden, I think those guys said I just don't I don't know I don't know if Al Washington did. And when I say when I criticize Notre Dame, like I, I'm thinking to myself, if they were to watch this, like am I am I comfortable saying this to their face? Like if if they then call me and say, Hey Mike, what the heck is that? Would I be comfortable and say? that in a, in talking to them on the phone I would I would so I think that's 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 definitely a part of it here 
listen, I understand it's a it's a Catholic school kid from Chicago, Notre Dame should land all those, but dude, this is 2023 recruiting, man. Like it, it, you know, this ain't you know the you know the 90s when you know Notre Dame goes into Juliet Catholic and recruits a kid named Mike Goolsby. Sorry, Goolsby, you're going to Notre Dame if you like it or not. Like this, it's <laughs> it's just a lot different. Um, you know. It, so yeah, Darren, it's uh it, it's a recruiting loss. Sure, did Notre Dame pull out all the stops? Yes. But at the end of the day, you follow the visits. The kid visited Notre Dame three times, and one of those times was six months before he even got the offer from the Irish. So two times did he visit Notre Dame while he had that offer from Notre Dame. And he visited Miami, I think, three or four times. And getting to Notre Dame twice in a year or so. I mean, that's just a disaster. I, I Even though, Darren, he was close to committing to Notre Dame in January, I still don't know how interested he was in Notre Dame. The Irish finished third for him. It was Ohio State, obviously, one. Miami, to, or excuse me, Michigan, two. Notre Dame, three. I, I think there, I mean, there was a lot of pull. Notre Dame pull at St. Ignatius. I think maybe even the mom preferred Notre Dame earlier in the recruitment. Um, I think he may have had some pressure to commit to Notre Dame, and I think he had kind of convinced himself, hey, I, sh- I should commit here. But then when push came to shove, there's a reason why he didn't commit to Notre Dame. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, he had a good visit. What was it, this spring to Notre Dame, Darren? Uh, what was the exact date that Scott did end up getting to Notre Dame? Uh, March 25th. Okay. But again, he went from July 2022 to March 2023 without a visit. I mean, like that's a crazy span there, right? Uh, to go, what, nine months without a visit when it's, you know, a little over an hour away. Um, so, yeah, a lot to uh, – um, Darren, we could, we could spend an hour on Justin Scott and not picking Notre Dame. Let me just ask one more real quick one, and this one you may not know the answer to, but I think – as someone who follows recruiting through you, I always found it interesting that Notre Dame could never get an official lined up with them. Now, I understand hour and a half away, you don't necessarily have to use one of your officials. So I get that. Do you think that was the reason? I don't know if it's the reason. I'm, I'm going to – I wrote about this in my article, bloomgold.com. It's weird that they I were a top five school and didn't get a summer official visit. I don't think it's because Notre Dame was like, hey, let's have them in the, in the fall. They had all their top targets visit in June. Notre Dame wants to wrap up their recruiting by August, like it, by July, really. They're on vacation right now. And I've seen tweets, oh, Notre, oh, the sky's been falling for Notre Dame recruiting. The staff's on vacation. Guys, coaching staffs take vacations. They <laughs> are real people. They're, they're humans, too. I mean, goodness gracious. You don't think the staff's also working on their vacation? Like, they are. I, I know they are. Um, poor guys can't get your break, yeah, but also they make a ton of money. So I don't have too much sympathy for them, but seriously, in all seriousness though, they wanted him to take the official in June. I guess he just didn't want to. And then the conversation shifts. Well, if he's not going to commit during the summer and he's going to commit late into the fall or something, then it's ideal to get him in this in September for the Ohio state game. Like we had been talking about on our show, Darren, but I'd also been hearing, that, hey, he might commit in July. And if that's the case, that's not good for Notre Dame. Right. Unless he visits at the end of July when the dead period lifts, then that's great. If he you know, wants to visit at the end of July and then commit after that to Notre Dame, then that's the ideal scenario for him to commit in the summer. But this was the not good scenario. But before we move on, Darren, Notre Dame's not going to give up. They're still going to try to get him for that Ohio State game. Like, hey, you're committed to Ohio State. Why don't you come get free tickets to watch Notre Dame play Ohio State? <laughs> Notre Dame will still roll out the red carpet f- for him. You know, you hope the Irish beat, um, you know, the Buckeyes right in front of his eyes, and then maybe Notre Dame pulls off the flip. I- I'm told, like, if Notre Dame gets him on campus for that game, like, they they feel confident that they could pull off the flip. Now, is that baseless optimism? I don't know. But um, a long way to say that, Darren, Notre Dame is not giving up on Justin Scott, and, and nor should they. I'm just worried at that game, if he would visit, that there's going to be a whole lot of Scarlet Gray fans sitting in the stands. But that's a conversation for another day. Hey, last week you caught up with Isaiah Canyon, the four-star wide receiver commit. What's new with him? Oh, yeah, Darren, uh, when it rains, it pours. So, 
yeah, this one is kind of crazy. I, I literally was at his, I, I saw him on Thursday morning and it was after I saw him was communicating with different Notre Dame sources and everything was great. I mean, Canyon, I talked to Canyon. He told me, he's, you know, I, I should, I shouldn't say he told me he was locked in, but he gave me no, in, no indication that he wasn't anything but very solid. And again, Notre Dame sources feeling great. And Saturday morning, it, it caught I, that. I believe he told Notre Dame Saturday morning and then he decommits, I, I think around noon Eastern, like it, Totally out of the blue. Notre Dame did not see it coming, but clearly he had thing li- this thing lined up with Georgia Tech to flip because then Monday, he, you know, he flips. Um, is today Monday or Tuesday? It's Monday. Yeah. Sorry, we usually record this on Tuesday. Um, but uh, yeah, Darren, he um, he caught everyone by surprise with this. This was uh, totally unexpected. So, I, I mean, look, does this news stink? Sure. I mean, he, he's a fantastic player. I really liked what I saw from him on Thursday, but I mean, there, there's several other players that if they decommitted, that'd be a lot worse news. I mean, you know, Notre Dame isn't losing sleep here again. It sucks. This is a recruiting loss. Someone tweeted me, ah, Notre Dame pulled a scholarship. That's a bunch of crap. I mean, Notre Dame, Again, this is a loss. Notre Dame really wanted him, but of all the commitments, like this is not one that they're going to totally lose sleep over. Notre Dame will go after some other receivers, um, and uh, I-, I think it'll be okay at the end of the day. This is one, Mike, that I really believe in the position coach and Chancey Stuckey, what he did in the last recruiting cycle, and he's got Williams committed in this upcoming cycle. I just feel like Notre Dame's going to be fine. And like you said, you don't ever want to lose a player and you like the player. But at the same time, if there's a position right now, and I think I would say this yeah. going back to two years ago, but they're building a really good wide receiver room. You hate to lose them, but they're not in awful shape right now at that wide receiver position, including some other possibilities to take his spot. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean, even though Tobias Merriweather, you wanted more in that 2021 class, he's a darn good one, or 2022, I should say. In 2023, they signed a great three-man, four-man yeah. hall, and then they got two good ones committed, Micah Gilbert and Cam Williams. Just one more note. Clearly, I, I mean, the, the proximity to home is a huge factor. His his family supported the Notre Dame commitment, but, I mean, his mom doesn't fly, is what I was told. Like she, wow. I, So, I mean, you go to Georgia Tech and, and – you know, it's 90 minutes up the road, even though, um, you know, the traffic on, on 75 can absolutely suck in Atlanta, but it, it's still an easy trip. Um, so I think that was a huge part. I mean, Chancey Stuckey and did a, a great job here, but there's just some things that you can't control. If you put Notre Dame in Atlanta, I, I really think they just clean house, you know, but <laughs> Notre Dame is in, in, in South Bend, Indiana, like that there's just, like, what, what do you want Notre Dame to do in that situation? There's just really not much they can do.